Hi, I'm Yaya. I'm 47 years old. I'm from Converse, Texas, and this is Financial Audit. Converse, Texas? How close to Austin is that? Um, that is close to San Antonio. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for coming up. What do you sure. do for a living right now? Well, right now I do quality assurance um, for a medical waste company. Mm. and But that's not really my passion, though. Um, mm. We just moved here actually in April, end of April. Who's we? Me and my, my kids. Oh, okay. And um, I am working on getting licensed for uh, mental health counseling. So, oh, I love yeah. that. That's really important. That's good. Yeah, I, I love doing it as an intern in Illinois, and mm. I just, just need to take the test and go through the licensing um, stuff here. So. Okay. How old are your kids? Four and five. Very nice. Where'd you guys move from? Il- um, well, Lyle, Illinois, which is like the Midwest. Right out, I'm Midwest, from Michigan, right out of Chica- yeah. right outside Chicago. Yeah, I'm from I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh, so I know we're pretty close to, to that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, welcome to the warmth. Usually, <laughs> I mean, it's only 64 right now. Hey, it's Rip. nicer than 30, 40 degrees. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. What are you making at your current job? Oh, right now it's not much. Not what I'm used to. I'm only making a little over 56 grand a year. It's not terrible though. It's not terrible. It's not terrible, but when. And that's the only, kids, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I had coming in. When did you move here? Uh, April. We arrived okay. April 30th. I had coming in in the most recent statement, $3,661. Oh, Sounds wow. about right. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you feel living off of that with the two kids? Uh, I'm making it. It probably wouldn't be as bad if I didn't have so much credit card debt. Yeah. You've kind of <laughs> yourself. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, there's a, there's a history behind that. Oh, I'm sure there so, always is. Yeah. And we can get into it in a bit, but, uh, I, so I do a thing. So fun fact, you're actually one of the first people in like forever who has not seen a single episode of the show, which not. is kind of exciting, uh, <laughs> which means that I'll probably be a little more delicate <laughs> as you because a lot of people that have seen the show they've seen the show and then they come on and they're still f-ing up so i can pisses me off but still with that being said i do a score at the end okay. i rate your finances zero to ten zero being bad ten being great what would you give your overall financial score right now zero right to now 10? zero probably oh yeah honest <laughs> it's not appreciate it it's not good it's not good i made a lot of <sighs> but you're still making bad decisions well, but you're still spending on the cards. Yeah. After I, pay, I make the payment and then I have to use it to buy certain things. You know, it's not like I'm out shopping and do I'm buying groceries or, well, um, well. you know, ordering I like mean. on Amazon, like, you know, like their, you know, clothes or shoes or stuff like that. I know I'm kind of like in this, this bad cycle of spending and but i do have a plan i have a plan to get out of it but it's just gonna take a little time the extra miscellaneous bullshit that is not required to survive by any mm-hmm. means by the way was uh close to 10 percent of your overall spending where eating out was about four percent of your overall spending okay. so all going to put in clothes on the kids i'm gonna have to immediately push back on okay it will help mm-hmm. uh as a general rule for the show mm-hmm. Not the bull because it will be called out. <laughs> It'll be seen. Well, I have eyes into your finances. We've gone over it back to front to front to back okay, okay. multiple times. Well, we I, will burn you at the stake I'm, of truth. I, I, I believe you. Yeah. I totally believe you. I'm not going to lie. I have bought stuff for myself. Yeah. <sighs> there's a lot of things that go into, there's a lot of things that, that go into spending. And uh, first thing, I feel like you got to go back to how you were taught to spend and and save. Sure. It goes back to childhood. And, you know, I have parents that came, I mean, they're both highly educated, smart as hell, but you know, when you come from a, a, a country that doesn't have a credit system to a place that does Where they come from Ghana. Okay. So, you know, I think their just their, their way of spending was just not conducive to really building wealth or saving and sure. kind of being in the hole. So you learn how to spend that way. Not even that dude, people born in the United States, whether or not they're <laughs> from another country, the American way is going to debt until you, the day you die and not know how to control spending. So, and so I grew up kind of thinking that way, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses, getting a, yeah. a flashy sports car when I was like 19. What'd you get at 19? Well, what I'm was probably it? dating myself, but it was a brand new Mitsubishi Eclipse when that first came out. Oh, oh I just love that, that means nothing to me. Oh, okay. 
Cause I, but I don't know any cars. Well, I don't know any cars. Well, you're you're like twelve. You look. You are super <laughs> young, so you probably you. would not. No, I don't. I don't know that. today's cars. No. I just don't know cars. I'm. I, I have a Jeep Cherokee. Me too. Really? <laughs> yeah, I do. And that is like all I know that exists in the world. I know there's such thing. There's such thing as a Buick out there. That's uh, a car that exists. Oh yeah. Because I've had one. Back. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, either way, so you rate yourself as a zero. Mm-hmm. What immediately scared me going into this, mm-hmm. and I'm going to put the fear of debt into you, just because <laughs> it's important for people to realize, especially since you haven't seen the show. A lot of people that'll come in, they're like, "My situation's not good. Oh, not that bad either. Not like Fuck you. It's pretty terrible." I need to make sure you understand how absolutely dire your situation is mm-hmm. and then what we can do to actually turn it around. I will yes. give you a plan in the end. Okay, cool. So stands out to me immediately. Credit one. Mm, yeah. Evil. Mm-hmm. They are basically just the most evil credit card company that exists. They like disguise themselves to look like capital one when it's coming in and sign up for it. And then they just hit you with fees and terrible interest. And just, there's, they just pound people into the ground and then they open up multiple credit cards with credit one because it's like $500 limits. In this case, it's a $700 limit. What do we have here? We had a previous balance, $651. Payment of $50. Good job. Purchases of $51.77. So if we know, if we're trying to get out of debt, dude, and I assume you don't like these cards. You said that you don't like being in credit card debt. Mm-hmm. You said you're trying to pay them off. Mm-hmm. You've, made, you've made mistakes. Mm-hmm. Why are we putting more money on it than we put towards it and then six hours yeah. of fees 16 hours of interest bringing it from 651 to 668 so the balance went up mm-hmm. well i just made another payment so just before it doesn't matter I what know. what happens here is you make a payment and then you put more money on it so like next week you're gonna go put more money on it this is the most recent statement we have mm-hmm. and is it putting clothes on the kids back no it's going to bill miller barbecue <laughs> That sounds that sounds horrible when you say it like that. Yeah, <laughs> and this is the I know, reality I of I, it. I, I, I shouldn't even laugh because it's it's really not funny. No, it's, it's not. It's terrifying. It's, it is. It's that's not good. Um. Okay, I guess full disclosure. It, it and I I don't want to use being a single mom as an excuse because it's it's just a fact of life right now. Yeah. But you know, I do. I do struggle with being, you know, overwhelmed or maybe a little bit depressed, anxious. And so, and when people are in that state, sometimes they, they find a little bit of satisfaction in, in buying, I'm sorry, uh, in buying little things, you know, um, I'm not a huge spender as you've noticed. I don't think you see any like enormous purchases. Over, no, it's a lot like, of little purchases. It's a lot of little, do, exactly. Which is almost worse. Oh, and I was just going to say that, I think that's one of the things I convinced myself of. Oh, I, oh, I just got this, you know, it's a deal $7.99 or $8.99 or $20 or $30 or here or there. Oh, this is, a, you know, this is really, you know, good on sale. And I convinced myself, well, I didn't spend that much. But in reality, when you add all those purchases up, then I look back and then I feel bad. I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have. I could have mm. done without that or I, you know, done without this. But, you know, full disclosure, you know, after the kids go to bed and I'm sitting there by myself and I'm feeling kind of bummed out or whatever. Um, you know, sometimes I, it makes me feel a little bit better to, I'm sitting there on Amazon, you know, and I'm looking and I'm seeing these really cute yoga pants and I'm like, okay. Cause I've, you know, I've gotten into <laughs> working out a lot since I got here mm-hmm. and, you know, and you know, I joined backstage.com, you know, trying to look for some, you know, fitness type gigs or whatever. Mm. So, you know, I've been kind of investing in like some new shoes, which I probably didn't need. Some well, yoga pants. Investing, yeah. <laughs> you, well, that's a nice way to put it, I guess. So it makes you happy? It Temporarily. Okay. Temporarily. Do you have anything in retirement? <sighs> Very little. You know what will make you happy? Mm-hmm. You being able to retire and your kids not being morally obligated to take care of you because Absolutely. you were not mature enough to set yourself up for retirement. You're approaching 50. I am. You can start withdrawing things from retirement accounts, tax free, penalty free, sorry, penalty free at 59 and a half. I want to take a brief moment to thank today's episode sponsor, SoFi. If you didn't know already, SoFi is an all in one finance app that allows you to bank, borrow, and invest all in one place. But that's not even all they have to offer. 
If you're looking for a new budgeting app, and I know a lot of you are because Mint is shutting down, SoFi makes tracking all of your money a breeze with their financial insights tools. Track your cash, spending, savings, investments, and loans all from one single mobile dashboard. You're also able to link all of your accounts for a comprehensive view of your total financial picture. With SoFi, you have access to free credit score monitoring, allowing you to check your credit score without any effect on your credit. You even get rewarded each time your credit score improves by five points or more. SoFi makes budgeting easy by letting you set monthly spending targets and provides an easy way for you to be able to review your top spending categories and reoccurring expenses so you can stay on top of your budgeting goals. And here's the exciting thing for new users. New users can earn up to $10 in reward points by signing up and activating credit score monitoring. It's that easy. SoFi is here to simplify your financial life and reward you along the way. And because SoFi wants to help you take charge of your financial future, they are giving one of you a grand prize of $5,000. All you have to do to enter is to sign up for free credit score monitoring with SoFi by scanning this QR code or visiting SoFi.com forward slash Caleb Insights or clicking the link at the top of the description below. You're approaching that decade of your life. Mm -hmm. And we have how much in retirement right now? Oh gosh, I don't even think you want to know. I want to know. I need to Probably know. Probably maybe two grand. And what's it in? Uh, 401k. Okay. That won't last you a quarter. No. And social security is not something I... Could, who knows what it's going to look like in five years from now, let alone 15. Well, here's the thing. There, uh, there was a time I was in an abusive relationship uh, with my kid's dad. And he was not only verbally and physically abusive, he was financially abusive. Oh, so sometimes the, the emotional bondage that you're in is almost worse sure. than being punched in the face or strangled. You know, it's, it's, it's very difficult. And so when they're coercing you, you better give me this amount or you better give me this and buy that. And mind you, I'm the only one working. There's two car payments. There's a condo. There's two children. There's all these things. So now... And then I was pregnant at the time. I, the company offered us a buyout. I'd been there for a long time. Mm. So that check was pretty big. Oh, is that where it came from? That's where it came from. Oh, okay. So, so what you saved? Uh, no, it okay. wasn't. Well, part of it was I had a lot more money in my 401k, and I ended up cashing that out. So I had all this money that I thought was, well, I had put most of it in a savings account, high interest savings account. Sure. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be great. The plan was for him to work, for me to relax for a little bit, and then I was going to get another job right away, you know. But then corona happened. Now we're in the pandemic. Now I can't find a job. He's not working. So slowly but surely, the money's getting mm. whittled away and whittled down and whittled down. When did you leave? Leave him? The relationship. Um, October 3rd of 22. Good. I'm glad. Especially if there's anything physical. I mean, the other ones are unexcusable too. But if there, if there's even like a concept of something physical, well, I lost yeah, I'm like, when I'm I left. done. Like literally, he destroyed the condo. He disabled my car. I was never oh, able to drive the God. car again. You, uh, charges? Did you press I did. charges? I did. And and it, oh well, we can't really do anything because Who's he lived that? here. To, the police. Well, he, he lived here too, and there's not a law against someone destroying their own things. I'm like, oh, this was he on the title of the car? No. Mm, I found some. Well, he did, did you speak to a lawyer. Um, oh, I did speak to a, I, I did speak to a family law attorney because he was making all these threats about taking the kids. I'm like, ain't nobody gonna give mm. you the kids, dude. Ain't nobody giving you no damn kids. Oh man. So, <laughs> I'm just trying to give you some background, but that's yeah. not. But it's not. I don't use it as excuses for bad spending habits. Yeah, yeah. Because no, the bad spending habits still exist. They they, they predated the relationship. Well, the thing is, I just need you to retire because, yeah. like, if you... They'll be entering their 20s by the time you're probably, like, all right, I feel like I should retire. <laughs> right. That means, like, I don't know if you're going to be able to survive with Social Security. We no, can't, and that's not well, So what happens then? What happens? You don't have anything saved because we're just going into more and more debt like this. We overspend mm -hmm. from what you're already putting towards it. Mm -hmm. So your two kids will feel like they have to take care of you. And I don't want that. No, I don't want all. that either. It's actually, it's an immature choice mm -hmm. to put that on your children. Yeah. And I, I absolutely, that is one of my biggest fears, actually. It I should do be. not want to put them in a position to where I don't, I don't want them to inherit the same spending habits. I want to mm. teach them how to save, how to spend and give them what I call a little bit of jump off money. So when they're done with school, 
they've got a little bit of something that they can use to get their lives started. Four and five. I'm giving you our budgeting course, which is the best budgeting course online for mm -hmm. free. Uh, when they are like 13, 14, 15, mm -hmm. make, them, make them take the class. That'll teach them some really good skills. And it also gives them resources of how to budget, like actual physical resources. Yeah. Um, so build builders barbecue. I think retirement's a little more important than that. Yeah. I agree. Okay. So credit one again. This is what usually happens with credit one. You have one credit one, you, you get, get a second, second credit one. one. Oh, this is a pretty high credit one balance. That was the first one that I got. This the one you looked at previously was the second one. Okay. We're sitting at one thousand three hundred and eighty eight dollars and forty cents. Death at a $70 minimum monthly payment. Now we did a $70 payment, but what did we do? We went and purchased $96. Experian credit report. You don't need to pay for that, dude. It's just like credit karma or get your, get your free annual credit report as well. It's just, that's good for people who are nerding out on their credit score. Totally good. When you don't have that and you have a fully funded emergency fund and you're contributing at least 20% to your retirement. Yeah, go do that. Put it in your fund budget does not make sense in your situation. And then gas, and then gas. You get gas every second of your life, by the way. Across all your statements, you fill a tank of gas every second of your life, unless you're grocery shopping from the gas station. Do it? I don't know. You're filling up $30, $40 tanks of gas like every other day. Across all the statements combined, it's wild. I don't care, babe. I don't, I, I don't even go anywhere. I work from home, and I take the kids to school. And I pick them up. It's like, I am so boring. <laughs> I rarely go anywhere. You know, it's not boring. Hitting that subscribe button because we're trying to get to a million subscribers. And I can't believe I'm even saying that. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far. It's natural. I had to do I had to do the segue. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I don't know. We'll take a look into it. And we'll see if we miss something. Uh, interest this year so far, 173 and $68 of fees. On the last one, we didn't even say, but it was $43 of interest this year so far and $118 of fees. Fees, 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 fees. Oh, boy. One main. Oh, what God. is one main for? What, what uh, even is this? That was one of the worst <gasps> decisions ever. I didn't even see this before. I went through this, but the text is so small. Me. This is, this is insane. What is this? What is um, this? I don't know. Is, is that the personal loan? Yeah, what yeah. was it for? Oh, well, so this was, this would have been, I think in June of 22, I took that out, some somewhere around there, and um, we were basically broke, and just did not have enough money to make it through. Why are we broke? Um, in that time. In, in that time, all of my money went to paying all the bills and all the other bills that he racked up. Okay. Um, I I hate to say this, but I mean, this is the truth. He had a problem with. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, well, not. Well, were they not really like Kratom? I don't really know what that know. is, but I, I don't know many things. Um, just, buying all these uh, like uppers. It's just some stupid. Like, and you're popping all these and demanding money from me, and running up my credit card, and... How long are you guys together? Oh, six years. Okay, I'm, uh, again, I'm glad you're out of it. I'm, I'm, so am I. You have a restraining order? Has he tried to I do contact? have a restraining order. Good. Out of Illinois, I don't know how much that means here, but... Well, if you needed to pursue it here as well, I would obviously encourage that. Uh, hopefully you don't need to, though. Um, three thousand eight hundred seventy-two dollars on here with one hundred forty-three minimum monthly payment. He took this out in order to survive, but guess what? They're like loan sharks, honestly. Thirty-six percent death, death. I original loan amount was thirty-four hundred dollars. That's all I got, and I still if the I, original was thirty-three thirty three thousand four hundred dollars, and it's currently original, three thousand eight hundred seventy-two. Yes. Oh, this. That's why I call them loan sharks. You one main financial. I'm, I'm like, oh. And when the last time I called for a payoff was maybe I don't know three or so weeks ago. I wanted to find out. Well, how much if I paid off now? Oh, twenty. She's like twenty nine hundred. What? I'm like I've been paying you one hundred forty three dollars for over a year, damn near a oh, year and a half. Oh, balance is not payoff. Call for payoff. I wish I had no morals because God open up this company. See how much money they're yeah. making? It's disgusting yeah. though. It's I, and disgusting. I hate myself for that one. That's the first thing that's getting paid off when well, I you, have some money in my you hand. You did it. Let it be a lesson to not. Never, ever, ever again. Never again. 
This is disgusting. <laughs> this one's disgusting. Yeah, I, I agree. Prosper. Mm. It's a card. Mm. Yep, not prospering on that one. Oh. <laughs> Current balance, 232. No interest, though. So you didn't fully pay it off, though. Oh. Oh, Wait, I've paid that sorry. off several times. Yeah, you paid this off. But do you ever rack it back up? Yeah. Why? Buying stuff. Okay. You know what we call that here? You're not a credit card person. <laughs> You're not a credit card person. Credit card people are people that can finesse the system. Never pay a single cent of interest on their life. Make the rewards back, like getting 2% discount on all purchases with the city double cash, something like that. You're not a credit card person. They're taking advantage of you. They're making money off of you. You pay yeah. off the balance. You build it all the way back up. You're getting Amazon, Amazon, and eBay. eBay? Great. And it's a 33.24% interest. Though you didn't have interest in the statement because you did pay it off, you're right. You've built it up. You've had fees, $40 of fees, and $9.30 of interest this year so far. You're not a credit card person. I'll connect you with a resource that people in this community use all the time. Uh, it's, it's called Fizz. It's a credit card, so it helps build your credit, mm. but it pays it off instantly like a debit card, so you'll mm. never hold a balance, dude. Okay. It's so, it's what you need. You are not a credit card person. I need you to close all these accounts. <laughs> I need you to chop up what? Well, if I close all my accounts, it's going to fuck my credit score. What? F*** you. Do you I do you even know what you just said? Do you even know what that means? You're not taking advantage of credit. You're not taking advantage of credit. Credit is taking advantage of you. You are paying hundreds of dollars a month. In, no, 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 no. Maybe even like a thousand dollars a month in interest. They are making money off of you. You're taking advantage of nothing that comes with a halfway decent credit score. What's your credit score? Uh, well, last time I checked it, it said six something low six or high six no it's low six okay so it barely even matters so it barely even matters what does it matter well, close these pay them off i plan to go i plan to pay them all off how do you plan to pay them off we're 47 years in and we have oh, these i know and well, like I you said you just built I, I know but you like you said you pay off that credit card and you build it up every single time i know it's the situation i'm in right now but like i said i have a plan. I bet if we budget I bet if we budget in the end that there's I do want practically budget. no excuse. I do want. I have do you budgeted? Get good, you know what? I'm not. I'm not good at that. I'm okay. At then you're gonna take. You're gonna take my class. We're gonna give you. And there's a spreadsheet that you can plug your budget into, and it'll do all the math for you. I do. I do want to do that because I. I'm also gonna create you a basic one at the end. Okay. But. I mean, for to. so long, I I waited till after. 40 to have kids. So for 40 years, I was single. I had money. I was traveling. I was kicking it. Got, you know, got my master's degree, did all of that. How and much did you have in retirement though? Um, uh, how much did I have at one time? Maybe like something like that. By what age? Let's see. I was there in like 19 years. So I was 40. Okay. That's way too low for our 40. So even though you were doing okay financially, you're still prioritizing fun and bullshit over your actual necessities of life. Yeah. So there's still a lot of the bad habits that are persisting today were still prevalent then. Correct. It's just now we're in a darker situation. And that's why I said the, the bad spending habits predated the relationship. Yeah. It only got worse during that time period. And now I find myself like, damn, I don't have access to that kind of money anymore where I can pay all this shit off yeah. and, you know, get ahead. Right way. Yeah, that's another one main financial oh, uh, great. company. Yeah, it you is. Know. That probably wasn't a smart decision because... Has any of this been? Well... $725.07 with a minimum monthly payment of $26.38 with $240 of purchases even though you only did the minimum monthly payment, dude. What the f***? $16 of interest charge for... for for losing interest, I'm just trying. I'm not trying. I'm trying not to go as hard on you as I normally do on people, because you haven't seen the show. This might be your first, like, actual conversation with someone who wants you to succeed financially. So <laughs> I want to be gentle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if there, if there's a balance we can't pay off mm -hmm. on a card that is accruing interest, mm -hmm. we are not purchasing a single cent on it. It's not an option. 
I did uh, definitely not intend to. I. What do you mean you didn't I told, intend to? Well, I told myself. You use the studio booking thing, Little Caesars, and lead for well, Worth. I know. I My intent when I got the card was, oh, okay, I will boost my total credit so that way my um, debt to, well, not debt to income, but you know, my available credit, because they say, uh, yeah, they, yeah, they always yeah, talk yeah. about credit usage, okay? Yeah, so it's utilization, like, okay, yeah. credit utilization, okay, that's it, credit utilization. I'm like, okay, well, th- if I add two grand to my overall credit, you know, limit. But you also lowered the age of your overall credit, so well, we'll see how much it offsets. Yeah. Utilization is a bigger impact. Though, so, but- I, so I thought, that's what I thought. I thought, okay, that's what I'll do, that's, you know, and I was not intending to spend it at all, but... So you thought that, That's and this happened, and then yeah. So remind me, what are you not? I'm not a credit card person. Cut this up, destroy it, burn it. It doesn't exist. It's ruining you. Okay, You're so not- let me ask you a question though. Yeah. Okay. So credit utilization, yep. right? And they say that if you voluntarily close your credit card account, mm-hmm. that it tanks your credit score. Sure. So if I close all my credit accounts, then how fast can I even expect my credit score to rebound from that? Now I have no credit. Well, okay, so it's going to decrease the age of your score Mm -hmm. and your available credit. Yes, it will. Even though these are pretty close to maxed out anyway, so will it impact available credit? Not that much. But it'll definitely decrease your age and it'll negatively impact your score. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. A a question to your question. Mm -hmm. What do you use your credit score for? What do you use your credit score for? There's two main things that I have on my radar right now. Mm-hmm. A, I want to refinance my car because because of, of the situation that I was in, that he yeah. put me in, I ended up having to buy another car while there was still another car. What's the interest rate on it? It's like 18%. It's ridiculous. With your credit score, though, I don't know how much better you're going to get, to be honest. Well, my what I want to do is I want to improve my credit score so I can refinance. But you see that having these credit cards and your actions behind them, lack of discipline, lack of maturity mm-hmm. and lack of understanding, mm-hmm. you're making your credit worse. So like, what's yes. the point? Yes. These are obviously an enabler tool to your demise. Well, uh, okay. And, and what's the second thing? What's the well, second thing on your I want radar? to purchase a house. Okay. And that's not in the conversation right now. So, I mean, just being flat out. And that's okay. Yeah, not everyone. Need, I would love you to get a house. I mean, I've had a house before. Necessity. I've had a house before. I would like to purchase a house again. I'd love that. And maybe we can talk by about the 2025. End. That is my goal. Okay. Well, but see, I'm planning to pay these cards off within the next six uh, months. So again, we're 47 years in. What's your plan to start now? I'd like to hear your plan. That obviously <laughs> was not starting. Well, I have yesterday some funds that are going to be coming, and so I've kind of from been, where and how much. Okay. Well, I don't really want to say from where because it's kind of How much? sensitive. So I'm looking at about 6,500 and then hopefully from tax return, um, that will be enough to wipe all of this out. So once I do that, then from my monthly, just regular pay, I can, st- um, I can start saving that money. And that, that's really my plan is once I pay these cards off within the next six months, six to eight months, I guess, whenever tax time, I'm sorry, whenever tax time comes around, um, then, uh, then start saving the money that I'm paying for all this crap. I can be putting that to the side to start saving for the down payment for the house. I want to open up to savings accounts for my children and start putting money there. I, uh, I do not want to put money towards this. I want to want, I towards- do need you to have enough money saved for retirement though, which, yeah. Okay. 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 Well, and part of that plan too, and, and this may sound really ambitious, but I'm an ambitious person. Once I start counseling, which hopefully I, my the whole licensure process will be completed before the end of next year, my um my income is going to go way up. So I'm part of the plan is that when I have this increased income, then I'll be able to save more because now I don't have this debt. So, but I want to get out of this debt before I even get to that income level. People in your situation, people with your spending history, people with your debt history, tell me your best guess. 
what usually happens when people get a big sum of money and pay off their cards or they take their cards and consolidate it under one debt, what usually happens? They get into more debt. They take the balance from zero all the way back up because the behavior never changed. What was happening well, never changed. And look, you're not making those changes now. Again, Little Caesars, lead, studio booking, stuff we don't need to be doing right now is what was right. on this card when you can't even pay it off. So the behavior around that typically maintains. I know I know. in your gut you're like, oh, yeah, but I'm going to have the money. It's going to be clean. It's going to be good. You know, a fresh start. Without addressing the overall behavior and you're the discipline, right. lack of budgeting, mm-hmm. it does not go the way you say it's going I, to go. I, I, I believe you, but. Part of that also was I did want, that's part of the reason I did this too. Cause I'm like, well, maybe they have some kind of advice or something for me because mm-hmm. I know like, okay, I'm not budgeting at all. Really. I mean, I do budget little things here and there, but not at a substantial level. I do need some help with that. And I feel like, yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've had some bad spending habits, yeah. but I'm mature enough to realize, okay, this is not good. This is not going in the right direction. I think. So what do I need to do in order to, because I've been wanting for someone to look at my finances and say, okay, this is a situation you're in, but this is how you can get out of it. Sure. Realistically. Okay. You know, well, let's see how guaranteed is that 6,500. Pretty guaranteed. Give me your odds. Uh, About, I would say about 98%. All right. I'm just, I have to take your word on it. There's nothing else I can do. Milestone. Milestone of getting. (laughs) We owe $429.98. Wait, $8 of interest. Fees of $35. Oh, it was the annual fee. The annual fee on this card. Yeah. $40 minimum monthly payment. Again, you are not reaping the benefits from these cards. They don't make any sense. That's why you need to close them. And you know what? And I was going to ask about that, too, because... Um, I, the ones with the annual fees, I was literally thinking about closing them, but I'm like, okay, is this going to, how is this going to affect my credit score if I just close these cards? But I don't want to pay a fee every freaking month or Listen, every year. Utilization, uh, derogatory marks. Those are things that play like the heaviest weight on us. I think if we get you on the fizz card and maybe just one of these that just, you put gas on it twice a month and have it automatically paid off. I think even that with all these closed accounts is still going to put you in a better place credit wise. I can't promise, but I really do think. Okay. 24.9% interest on that one. My goodness, your debt just keeps going, doesn't it? <laughs> Sign up for all, every oh, debt that's God. ever existed. Well, uh, Except for student gonna... loans. I don't see student loans. Well, they're not in repayment right now, so... <laughs> You're gonna so they exist. Back. They do exist. Me. Oh, that's not even the worst credit card yet. Uh, I, I oh, think you're gonna blow no. a gasket when you see the the, the the one of the my my other statement. Eight hundred eighty nine, twenty one dollars of interest. Fees of four dollars. What the f- what the f- fees? That was the annual monthly fee. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, purchases two hundred forty nine dollars. Oh, f- you, f- you. Oh, never mind. Oh my gosh, never mind. I take back the. F- I thought you were over your credit balance there for a second. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, no. if you care about your credit, like, what are They're you doing? They're not all maxed out. Whatever this Alma, 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 oh, okay. Alma no. is. Well, that that I actually need to do. What is it? I don't that, know. What it's it a copay for counseling. Oh, that's totally chill. I, but I didn't. I didn't want to. I I really didn't want to put two, put three, it on that four, card. Four. I really didn't. No, I bet not. How often is that? Is that weekly? Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll put it in your budget four times a month then, right? Yeah. It's thirty fifty six. Thirty point five six times that by four. That's okay. a lot. It's a lot of. I won't. That's okay. You know, but God, if I could get rid of that loan and the other, well, like I said, I think your head's going to pop clean off when you see the other credit card. I've statement. seen them all, but I'm, I'm being reminded. Uh, like damn near $200. Nah. It's ridiculous. 32.95% interest rate on this. Okay. Time for destiny. Okay. Destiny is sitting at $282 and 90 cents. 
buddy, a lot of these balances are so f low that we could kill them now and it will save your sure. life and existence yeah. and future. That well, one I'm not too worried about. I can. You should be worried about all of them because uh, available credit is only 17 bucks on here. It's basically maxed out, which is also yeah. in your credit. Yeah, it is. Fees, $59. Interest, $5.48. $40 minimum monthly payment. Oh, f what was the minimum monthly on the last one? Uh, 39. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was the annual fee. Mm-hmm. And interest. I'm like, why should I pay $59 for a $300 credit limit? That just you seems signed ridiculous. up for it. Yeah. Oh, God. Ally. Yep. Oh, boy. And typically, Ally is known for giving you money by giving them money, but you are on the opposite side of it. Where you owe five thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars twenty-seven cents on a card that is only goes up to five thousand three hundred. Mm -hmm. Great, uh, balance went up. You're like, I hate this card. I hate this card. But yeah, we decided to put two hundred seventy-one dollars and twenty-seven cents of purchases on it. Does that make sense? I don't think so. Does Little Caesars make sense? I don't think so. Does Big Kahuna make sense? I really don't think well, so. Well, no, that was for my 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 son's fundraiser, so I made a donation. I get I probably wanting, should have done that in cash. You should probably, of, unfortunately, probably shouldn't have done that. And I know that sucks. I say that really sucks. You want to do that? You're mom, you're loving, you're caring. I can see it. I know that's your energy. You no, want to do yeah, that? Honestly, I do agree with that one. I'm like, he's in pre-K. There's like, also I that. We didn't need to. I could have waited on the fundraiser thing. Well, there's also <laughs> that I would rather fundraise your retirement so he doesn't have to take care of you when you're in your yeah. 70s. So yeah. that's what I choose. Nobody likes buying a $10 bag of popcorn. Was it good, at least? Uh, well, I didn't even get the popcorn. I got uh, like a twelve dollar bag. No, it's like fifteen dollar bag of cookies. Was it good? I mean, they were they were good. I don't think worth fifteen bucks. I bought I bought right. some. Uh, I bought Girl Scout cookies uh, when they came out, and I bought Boy Scout popcorn. Recently, well, see, it was Girl pretty Scout, good. Th those were good. These were just they were just okay. Kids Gym, hundred eight bucks. That what are you for doing? My son's birthday party. His first like. Kind of real birthday party, and I felt mm, I, I hate it. I felt I know, like I, I felt it. like I owed them because they've just been through so much, I you know, know, just know. seeing that violence. Uh, I just I, I feel like I, and that's part of the thing that drives me. I feel like I owe them the best life possible, and I know that does not include leaving them any debt. I am so that's whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm driven by that. Like I I have. What to do you get mean leaving debt. them on debt? I mean. As as they, as I get older and they get older, I don't want to have any debt, you know, or or not any savings for them, you know. Okay, well, these credit cards won't get passed on to them. Well, that I know, I know, oh, okay. but like, I need to have money in my account. I don't want them to worry about, you know, God yes. forbid. I know this is a long way away, but I don't. I th I still think about like, okay, what if something happens to me? Yeah. You know, I don't want them to worry about, oh, how are we gonna bury Mama? You know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. I do, you know, have a life insurance policy and all that, but Good. still. Um, you know, I don't want to leave them. I, I just, I want to leave them with something good. I want to leave them with some money. Yeah. I want to leave them, but more than just the money, I want to leave them with good spending habits so that they do not follow in my footsteps. I do not want them in debt. I don't want them taking out all these loans. I would really like to teach them how to finance school without having to go into debt. It'd be great. I, didn't, I put, I essentially put myself through school. I had to pay for it yeah. some kind of way. And I was, well, you took out student loans. I did. I was that in retrospect, if I could go back and do that all over again, I would have went to a different school. I went to a really great school, but I would have gone to a different school. I would probably state school, something cheaper. I would yes. have done work study. I would not have taken out all these. I would have. Well, there's even, there's like, I mean, totally even different. for them, you never know. There's like trade schools they can go to. There's certification programs. Like I like the tech certification to course careers. There's a lot of different options that are so, aren't like you have to go to college. College is great though for those who do it correctly. So that's definitely a good conversation to have, but um, obviously we'll get there because uh, the oldest one's only five right now. But uh, obviously that's a, that's a good want in the future. $1,389 of interest stolen from your, your life this year Gosh. so far and fees of $40 just on that card. I feel ugh, just thinking about that. Checking account. Ended with $97.97 terrifies me for a mother <laughs> or two. Yeah. Yeah. What happens if any payment hits? Um, yeah, I, but 
Just, uh, we could end with $97. 97 and that's why I end up cents. putting stuff on credit cards. Well, we could end with more money or we can go to Big Kahuna, Little Caesars, getting some taquitos, Grubhub, taquitos. And by the way, because you're not a watcher of this channel, taquito usually means stopping at a gas station and getting some bullshit. It doesn't matter. is isn't anything. It's like $2. You're not getting $2 of gas. I know that. Something from a Microsoft store, five below, taquitos, Little Caesars, taquitos, Dairy Queen, McDonald's, taquitos, McDonald's, taquitos, McDonald's, taquitos, Dairy Queen, Netflix, don't need it right now, they don't really have anything good, no. McDonald's, God, I want to cancel that. and taquitos, and eBay. I, you know what, stopping at the gas station a lot, mm -hmm. <laughs> buying energy drinks, yeah, which nope. is a bad idea. I know. So make some coffee at home. I don't like coffee. Well, uh, make some tea at home. I know that 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 is a bad habit of buying these energy drinks. Another bad, bad habit: total total overdraft fees this year so far, one hundred thirty six dollars. They refunded those. They refunded some of them, one hundred two dollars. Yeah. But the fact that you even met that, and yet we were choosing taquitos and yeah. around yeah. over having money. Yeah, nine dollars in another checking account. Nothing really happens here, but we got pizza. <laughs> Great, because that's what we need to survive. All right, my dude. I don't want you to be a fuck up. Heading down, being a fuck up, heading down the road to be a fuck up is by breaking my rules of not being a fuck up. You need an emergency fund. You do not have it. You're breaking rule number one. Does that fit in the budget? No. Breaking rule number uh, one and two. Don't hold a credit card balance. Oh, you know you're breaking number four. Uh, three. Uh, four. Do you have uh, debt on a car? Uh, yeah, I owe money on my, on my Jeep. What the fuck was that? What was that statement? Oh, oops. Well, we talked about it. I told you that it's like 18%. What? You're right. All right. 18%. How much is owed? Oh, God. Way more than it's worth. How much is owed? I owe like uh, 22, 22 grand. I know. It's it, minimum monthly no payment? Sweat. $549. It's absurd. Stop buying cars you can't afford. Rule number two. I needed a car, though. I had no You needed car. a car. You I did not no need a twenty to $30,000 car. Well, no, I didn't. And it doesn't even cost that much. The, it, it was a, it's a 2015 Jeep Cherokee. It's not worth that much. Okay? But the interest No, it's rate, not. I have a 29 Jeep Cherokee, and it's worth like 15 or 12. Mm -hmm. And because the interest oh, rate... I did. I knew... I, and, and the thing is... The refinancing isn't what's going to save you, though, because the balance is still rich. what's owed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But and at the time I knew I was getting screwed. But he he put me in that position on purpose. Live someplace you can actually afford. What's your rent? Oh, it's cheap. It's only eleven hundred. Well, no. that is good. Well, if you add in the um, utilities and stuff that are included, I pay thirteen twenty now. So it's not bad. It's a duplex. I've got a garage. And it's 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 a it's a cool place. Well, you already broke rule number seven in the past. It's about the proper ways yeah. to go to school. Yeah. Bum bum, that's a Netflix sound. Frank Underwood, before he touched boys, uh, was a great show. And that's rule number 10. You're breaking it. You don't need the Netflix subscription. No. Not right now. I actually, I actually meant to cancel that. I think I just forgot about it. Rule number nine, how to not die on the Walmart floor, how to do investing correctly, pulling from your 401k. That's yeah, not doing no. correctly. So you're breaking almost every rule in the how to not be a f list. So you break, you continue breaking those rules, you end up in the f up zone. I don't want you to do that. Your life's too important. Your kids' lives are too important. They are. Yeah, housing's a lot. It's about 30% of your income, but that's right on the cusp of being okay to not okay. Transportation's a good amount. Gas and car insurance and all that stuff. And then obviously the car loan. <laughs> going out to eat, um, getting your necessary food, groceries, 8.5%. But going out to eat, it's almost 4%. Yeah. So, great. I don't think great. spending it that much, but yeah. Well, you are. And that's the important part of this conversation is because now you know. Now you got to make the adult decisions. Uh, that gym, you know, the birthday thing and some other things you went to. But then also Amazon and Walmart. Uh, Walmart might be groceries. Mm, yeah, I ordered. Walmart's groceries? Yeah, Walmart's groceries. Okay, I so we put that in the unknown shopping because you never know. Walmart, you can buy anything. So groceries yeah, is probably that's, higher. Yeah, that's much easier to curbside is my friend. Those medicals, it felt like they were adding up a 30, but it was only 1.6% of your spending. Which one? Uh, the medical stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, counseling mm -hmm. and uh, three percent went to subscriptions and miscellaneous bullshit was 
uh, you know, eBay and that Microsoft thing and gas station taquitos. I, I think they charge the me for the studio like, thing. Oh no, I don't know that I was eight point three percent of your spending. Eight point three percent of your spending. Now, fun fact: add this all together, three point six percent of your spending went towards paying towards your debt. Totally, when we offset wow. what you spent there. Adding to your debt, and it feels like so that's three point fifty percent of my income. I feel like all my money is going towards these debts. Well, that's what it you're feels choosing like. to instead. I can do that now. When we calculate it, mm-hmm. we do do uh, we offset it by the amount that you added to your debt as well, because we don't consider putting money towards your debt if you've added money towards it. So, towards the progress you made towards your debt, three point six percent of your spending Sheesh. went there. It was very bad. Very bad. That is that okay. is bad. Did not realize that. Counseling, $122.24 a month. Rent and utilities, $1,320 a month. Does that include internet? No. How much for internet? Uh, $67. How much for car insurance? Oh, gosh. State Farm. Uh, $130. $130. $130? Yeah. R- renter's insurance. That's included in the rent. Gas, we saw two hundred forty three dollars. Yeah, and you said you don't you, drive. Well, much. you know what? Certain months I did probably drive a little bit more because we went to the lake on the weekend. So <laughs> we went to we, went. we put up a kiddie pool in the backyard. <laughs> I actually, I did, I did do that. I'll do two hundred. <laughs> okay. Groceries. Yep. Okay. Groceries. So with groceries, we found we can do. A human adult, 2,500 calories a day, not including the snacks that we also threw in, from H-E-B, meal prepping, 250 bucks a month for one adult. Now, let's throw in the two kids. I'm going to put you at 300. I'm going to throw in the two kids. Mm-hmm. I'm going to call that 750. How does that feel? 750 dollars a month for, for groceries. For, that's a lot. Uh, three. Seven, seven hundred. Jeez. Well, I'm Can giving. I that? I'm giving you. I don't think so. I don't know. I'm giving you three hundred. I'm just trying to figure out what's your budget. I'm giving you three hundred. I'm giving them two hundred each. Um, I try to. I try to make it on like four hundred bucks a month. Mm. But yeah, but you eat out a lot. So, uh, what I'm actually gonna do? You're right. That is a lot. So, if we're meal prepping together, all this stuff. You most people that come on this show are single and don't have kids, so we don't have to do this part of the math much. So, um, you can do without the eating out, honestly. Uh, yeah, I'm not putting in that in your budget. No, I'm no, not even close, not for a second. Three, four, five. Let's call it, let's call it 600 bucks. Obviously, if you can bring it lower, well being healthy, absolutely go for it. Toe paper, this is anything in order to survive. This is contributing things for school, getting pencils. This is the extra what you need to survive on a monthly basis fund. Mm-hmm. I call it the toilet paper fund, it's 150 bucks. Oh, we already had your counseling. Okay, phone bill. Um, how much is my cell bill? My cell bill is like, it's like fifty some bucks. And well, my mom's is on there, but she pays me back. Okay. So like, uh, all together, when she doesn't run up the bill, it's like, like one twenty. The typical bill is like one twenty one. But she pays back. Yeah, she pays. So me I'm back giving you fifty five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, this is a rough estimate budget. You have to get your exact numbers and plug it into the to the uh, program that we'll give you that comes with the class. Uh, okay, forty four fifty for life insurance. Yeah, for that one. And Jim is thirty six eighty one. Mm-hmm. Anything else you need to survive? While you're thinking, think about it for a second. I'm gonna add up your minimum monthly debt payments. There's nothing like that I can really think of that I have to have. You're damn right. Because your debt's going to be what kills you. Your debt, minimum monthly payments is $1,163.81. Yeah, it's rough. And I know that the cycle is 
bad because I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yep. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm making my credit card payments on time, which looks good for me, but then I'm turning around and spending it, which not all, not all the cards, but it's, it doesn't matter. It's just not How good. many hours a week are you working? 40. The unfortunate truth is, yes, you are. You are doing that. And the reason is because now with the debt minimum monthly payments and where they've gotten to, if you didn't have debt minimum monthly payments, by the way, you'd have like an extra, have an extra thousand bucks a month. And that is where I'm trying to get to because I, I that I have realized. I have realized, God, if I didn't have all of these minimum payments, how much money would I have? And yeah. what could I do with it? And but so with them, you need a minimum to survive, a minimum to survive 3,889. 3,660 foot one is what hits the account on a minimum monthly basis. So before we know it, we're not only not making progress on debt, but the debt's all going to become maxed out. And we're going to be forced to open a new card of one, then a new card of one, the new card. And I don't, I can't. don't want to go down that road. I really don't. Uh, so, and this becomes hard because we have kids to take care of. We're a single mom. There's no family here, right? Well, my sister is up. She's up here actually. Okay. So but there's no family there to babysit. No. So you work nine to five, uh, seven to three thirty typically. So it's cause, so in order to pick up the kids, yeah, you get to pick your hours. Yeah, my my schedule's really flexible. As long as I work forty hours, I kind of start. Can you work more than that? No, wait, it's work from overtime. home. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's gonna be harder because work from home jobs are harder to get. They really are. Oh sh- no! I just thought of the. All right, reality of the situation. This is going to be a pain in the ass, and I hate this. You're not going to want to do it, especially since you haven't listened to this channel. This is going to suck. You have to work nine, You have to work 40 hours a week, right, for this mm-hmm. job? Mm-hmm. Cool. Love it. Great. That's awesome. Doesn't have to... Okay. Kids are at school. You're going somewhere, and you're working while they're at school. Then you come home, cook them dinner, help them with homework, let them, you know, settle down, do some fun things on their own, and you're starting to work your your job that you already have now. Then you take a break, put them to bed, and then you're working late into the night. I would love that, actually. And I had been trying to find, like, another side gig that I could work at night, at least for four, another, like, four hours. Well, you while mean work can... from home? Yeah. Well, That's I'm saying, I'm saying uh, yes, work from home jobs are hard to land, but they're very competitive right now. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to have to go work somewhere during the day while they're off at school and then do your work from home job later in the evening through through early parts of the night. And I hate it. It sucks. You're going to be like actually opposed to that. Well, you really can't be because you want to know what the alternative is bankruptcy. And I don't want you to do that. If I, I mean, if, if I was able to work that out with my job, I don't know if they're going to let me work evenings because you have to work within a certain time. frame. Oh, well, you you didn't say that. Um, what are the time frames? They want you to start before nine and then, you, you know, say that. Till six, you know, sorry if I wasn't clear, it's very flexible, but I, I don't think they're going to let me work at night. Otherwise, you're, I mean, if I could, you're not making an insignificant amount of money. So, God. um, how, how to go get a job? I don't know what local resources are available there for after school programs. I don't know. Uh, I certainly don't, you know, if we get into childcare, that can cost thousands of dollars. Um, so you'd have to work like crazy to even afford that. If there's local resources that they, uh, after 3.30, whenever they're out of school, that they're able to go to a place until like six. That would be great. Um, the only issue with that right now is that a lot of places, they don't want pre-K. They want them to be a certain age. Well, okay. One's approaching it. That yeah. On the other. But well, I am I, still looking for some kind, even if it's like 15 bucks an hour data entry just yeah. at night, you know, that I can do from home. That would be so perfect if I could do that. That's yeah. what I'm, you know, I'm like, so I'm still, I'm still, I'm still looking. Cause I'm like, you well, know what? then I, if I you're not working anyway. this extra job, mm-hmm. You're after your 40 hours a week, you're spending another 40 hours a week right now applying to jobs. It's not an option. It's not applying for a few weeks. It's not applying for a few days. It's a full-time job. You're applying for jobs and you need to get something. I don't even care if it's seven twenty five or whatever the minimum wage is that yeah. I know it sucks, but you need to make more <laughs> money now. That sucks. That sucks. Doesn't it? Yeah. But guess what? Uh, your minimum in order to survive is 200 more dollars and you bring home 
So it's really not an option. I need you to work. And right now, if if there's truly no things available, there might be something pre K. Have you have you gone have you gone through every option? Yeah. Okay. When I got then here, I'm gonna take was, your I'm gonna take your I word on. Really, it. When I got here, I was really stressed out by myself with the kids twenty four seven. I'm like, I need to y'all need to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take your word for it then. So then what you have to do is yes, the work from home data entry, something low level, something that might not even hit 15. I don't know. You're going to take anything actually, and everything you can get. I, I am not opposed to that at all. You not can't be because you're it. going towards bankruptcy. Uh, you, I, unfortunately, and I really hate this, you just don't have a choice. <sighs> uh, except for bankruptcy. No, I'm not doing or that. Or moving to where family is so that they can babysit. Oh, you're God. working your job, yeah. and then they're babysitting while you're out working. And... From your reaction, looks like that's not an option. So that no, leaves us. That's that, not an again, leaves. I'm us not back opposed to working. I have. Okay. I've been. I've had jobs since I was 13. I am not opposed to working. I've worked overtime. I have worked three jobs before. So I am not. I don't sleep anyway. So I am not opposed to working like another part time job. This is scary. To be very clear, this is scary. You can't afford to survive right now. Saving that money. I love when my money is making more money and the SoFi high yield savings account I use has 4.6% interest on that money. It's the savings account I personally use for my tax money that I set aside and other money that I just want to be building while it's just sitting there. And you can get bonuses by signing up all the way up to $250 by using my affiliate link in the description below. And it's not just because they're my affiliate. I personally use them. They're great. I've had a great experience with them so far. And I only recommend those who I like working with and who I like using. So if you have money sitting in savings, have that money make some more money and use that high yield savings account. Link in the description below 4.6% and bonuses all the way up to $250. And your future's on the line, your kid's future's on the line. So I need that to be the fire under to go apply for other jobs like it's a full-time job and accept the first one that comes your way even if it's not perfect. And then if you don't like it, mm -hmm. you're applying to other jobs like it's another full-time job while you're doing that job and your main job. It's, it becomes hard. It's all easier said than done. Unfortunately, you just don't have a choice. Yeah. So if you care about your future, if you care about your child, children's future, you're going, you're bringing in an extra minimum 1500 bucks a month after taxes. Minimum. And then let's let's just say for the sake of it that you do that, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna do rough math here. The, our uh, payoff debt calculator within the budgeting uh, thing that we made that we're gonna give you access to is gonna provide you a more accurate answer. But actually, I should just pull that up. But we're already here. So say you bring in an extra. Let's actually call it. You have to bring in an extra minimum $1,700 a month after taxes so you can make up the $200 you lost and uh, put the $1,500 towards debt. Okay. Make sure everything's okay with that. Oh, well, I mean, oh. like you said, $6,500 might be coming in plus tax return. Either way, you have $30,760 of terrible death debt. Yeah. So, I mean, that'll just, that'll help the progress a little. So, I would definitely throw that at it, but let's just say it doesn't even happen. Go make an extra $1,700 a month after taxes. And it still takes 20 months to pay off. Minimal, not having any paid for fund, not a single cent for you or your kids, which really sucks. Yeah. So 30,000, 30, minus that by, let's call it after tax returns in this bonus, 8,500. Okay. Now minus that, divide that by 1,500 extra. That takes still a year and three months. To pay I like off. To see it. that. I like that's better. A year and three months. I can do that. A year and three months of sacrifice it was not that bad for your future and your children's future. It's not. It's, it's not. not. That means the money has to come in and the tax return has to at least be 2000 I don't know. Oh, it'll be more than that. Then your deductions are... Oh, well, I mean, well, you're I getting your child, yeah. children. Got two kids, so... Um, I mean, it'll, it, it... I With the money that I'm expecting, I... Because when I added up my actual debt, not not including the car... I'm probably looking at a, like around fifteen grand, I think. Yeah, but your um, car's included. Not, what well, it? well, I know I'm still gonna have to make that car payment. <laughs> I, I, right now, I'm the like the first thing on my list is getting all this the It'll loan and the money. credit cards. 
It'll free, free up more money. It'll, It'll take free up a lot more money. It'll take some minimum monthly payments away. Yes. And that... I but f- the car is half of your minimum monthly payments. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't... When I included my debt, I didn't include that. Because I'm like, well, I don't have 22 grand to pay that off right now. Oh, what do you have in have student loans? About. That's not really important because... It is. <laughs> they're not in repayment right now. That... Well, how much? I don't want to say. How much? It's a lot. Oh, come it's on. It's a lot. It's a whole, whole lot. We just put your entire financial life on display. You can tell us the student loans. Oh, God. Um, I'll just say it's more than 200000 For undergrad and master's degree. I know. I went to a very expensive school. And again, if I could go back in time. What a twist. If I could go oh. back in time, I would have gone to a much cheaper school. Oh, uh, yeah. And Is that all federal? Uh, yeah. Is that? Yeah. I think it's None of it's private? Um, no, I don't think so. Are you going to try to use the counseling into something that might go towards public student loan forgiveness? Yes. That might well, be I'm in a program option. right now. That is, that is my option. So um, the program I'm in now is once you make your minimum payments, I know it's a long time, and it's income-based, so it's not when it does go into repayment. Based. Yeah, so once it goes into repayment, it won't be, it's not that much, because I was I was paying on it before, and then it got suspended, you know, for after COVID or whatever. You gotta be very careful with it. You can't f*** up once. Oh, up no. Once, and it's... No, I, I paid on time every single month. Um, So what happens if the administration at the time, by the time you hit it, mm-hmm. whoever... Regardless of politics, whatever. What if the administration at the time, the Department of Education under them, is not going about forgiving a bunch of student loans? Well, kind of like um, they have well in they the past. S- even if they, well, I mean, that would be stupid for them to do because the average person Dude, doesn't. The well, they're they're never going to get their money, and they know that most average person they give you like twenty five years to pay it off, right? So if and they're at if they're adding in all this interest, and the average person can barely make the monthly payments, they cannot forgive it all they want to. But you're not going to get blood from a stone. You can take people to court. You can. Uh, well, you know what they would do. They attach your wages if they. Yes, you they know. garnish your wages. However, so they though, get their money. Yeah, but that and they the take administ- it before you get it. True, but it's a long. Pr- I've never known anyone that's ever happened to. Really? No. I have. Where they I do. F- for student loans? I've I've never known that to happen to anyone. Wage garnishing? Um, if you just choose not to pay? No, I'm well, not saying yeah. you're choosing not to pay. You're in a program right mm. now. I'm not saying that. Yeah. Uh, and if you just uh, well, you're right. If you just go into default yes. and you don't contact them, you don't try to work anything out, then that that's what they would probably do. But now, public student loan forgiveness. That's the one with the kind of bad track record the statistics are kind of flawed because a lot of the time people were applying for that program even though they actually didn't qualify for it at all mm. so it skews the percentage of people who have been successful either way it still it still wasn't great uh, but the current administration has picked up a lot of that mm-hmm. and has forgiven a lot more of it yeah. than past administrations but again what if a future administration doesn't i don't know and that's if you go public for um now they have the save plan the mm-hmm. save plan but mm-hmm. again Dude, with the student loans, student loans is such a touchy subject that it, it yeah. each department of education just approaches it in a different way. Yeah. And like, like, it's not a political thing. It's just like, what if you get someone that like, they just decide, hey, this is all shit. This is all shit. The student loans are being forgiven. You owe it. Well, you they owe would, it. honestly, they would end up screwing themselves because now you're yeah, putting okay. more, you're putting more people into uh, homelessness. You start. You start taking their wages. No, I'm not saying you know it's good. Saying? I'm not saying it's good. Mm-hmm. What if they just do it because that's just their viewpoint? I mean, you're, I'm I just mean, thinking could. about you. I'm they just could. thinking about you. Yeah, I mean, and no, and I, I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. I mean, I'm that. That's a, definitely a possibility. But either way, over two hundred thousand. That's wild. It's trade it, school and certifications, my friends. Uh, Community it, college all day. I would have. I would in in hindsight, had I realized that this was the situation I was going to be in, I wouldn't have worried about status and <laughs> you know it, trying to whatever. Status. I would have definitely uh, For a piece of paper. <laughs> I would have 
Well, you have to also have to understand part of it was a little bit cultural where, you know, it's like, oh, my daughter is this or my son is that. Oh, I know. And having know. to yeah. get that education, I would have. And what school are they going to? Oh, trust you know, me. I get I would have just gone to community college. You I come from an immigrant family. You come from people who have been highly educated. The addiction in just our culture alone in the United mm-hmm. States of, uh, you know, our kids should go to the best school, all this stuff, and mm. borrow whatever it takes. I get mm. it. Doesn't mm. mean it's not dumb as. F- yeah. But okay. You, but by the time you realize that, you're yes. already. So let's say you have 26 years if you want to retire mid 70s. $2,000 in retirement. That's. Uh, you can get to a million bucks for retirement, which it's 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 not going to be like. A luxurious retirement with that, but you can get there by doing a thousand bucks a month, thousand bucks a month into workplace contributions. Obviously, it takes advantage of tax advantage accounts. Roth IRAs are great. Okay. There's also brokerages you can throw things into. They're not as tax advantage. I mean, there's even like automated investing, kind of like Acorns and Vora, where they give you a one percent match. So, I mean, there's so many options. Okay. There's so many options. But thousand bucks a month after this is kind of the minimum you need to throw towards retirement after this, which means you might, yeah, I hope you get to that higher pay income sooner than later, yes. but you're going to have to start. I'm you, going to have to be really disciplined on my. You're going to budget hard. You're going to go through this thing, the program we're going to set you up with, but you're also just going to be working your <laughs> off for honestly the next decade, uh, two, <laughs> two and a half decades. I, I believe it. But it's worth it. Yeah. It's it worth is. it. I promise. It it's, it's just for your kids alone. It's worth it. It is. I agree. You have any final thoughts? Any questions? Um, no, I mean, I, I, I'm actually very grateful for this because this is a hard conversation that needed to be had with somebody. <laughs> I needed to have it. And I just, you know, didn't know, you know, I didn't know where to turn or, or what to do. And I thought I just kept thinking for so long, OK, I need to have some hard conversations with somebody who's going to be like, look, OK, this is what your financial outlook is. And this is what you need to do in order to upright your situation. You know, so I am very grateful to get the information. And um, I, I I know it's it sounds like bullshit because when you look at my spending, you're like, uh, yeah. But I am actually really, really determined to not be in this situation and to change my spending habits. I have two little faces that I see every single day, and they mo- they motivate me to do to do better, you know. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Hammer financial scores you out of ten, just as yeah, yeah, predicted. So. That's what it is. Make sure to check out all the resources linked in the description below. They are what I use or would use in specific situations. Thanks to all of our Patreon producers for making this episode possible. If you want to participate in an episode of Financial Audit and you're able to make it to Austin, Texas, please fill out an application in the survey linked in the description below. You can also send a link to your friends or family who you think might be good to be on the show. If you have any questions, you can email casting at calophammer.com. 